together growing in faith, changing communities. Together growing in faith, changing communities. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Today, dear friends, I would like us to reflect on the prophet Hosea, chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn that he may heal us. He has stricken and he will blind us up. He will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His going forth is sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that waters the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning Jew, like a Jew that goes early away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And my judgment goes forth as the light, for I desire mercy, not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Come, let us return to the Lord. I love that theme of Isaiah, of Hosea. Let us go back to God. Yes, he has dealt with us in what seems to be brutal, in what seems to be painful, but it will heal us. I'm interested in, in this theme of coming back to God. Isaiah says, though your sins are as red as a crimson, they shall be white as snow. Come back. And today I want to speak to someone who who's afraid. I'm afraid of going back home. Because how I left home was not pleasant. I caused drama. Everybody went out and they saw. And I'm scared of going back home because of the things I said to them. I'm sad of coming back to you because of the insults, because of the lies. I'm scared of coming back to you because I was so angry that I destroyed so much. But I want to come back. I've come home, I've come to realize that I was wrong. And it has taken me so long to admit to myself. But now I want to admit to you that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I walked out of our marriage. I'm sorry that I walked out on you as a baby. I'm sorry that I walked out on this family. I'm sorry that I left you on your own. And I possibly have no reason to expect you to forgive me. But I just want you to know that I'm sorry. I find this line... Then Hosea says, come back. Yes, the Lord has dealt with you. And you yourself acknowledge you've messed up. 
query will also heal you. And sometimes we need to look at this from that point of view as well. Yes, you were hurt. Yes, when they left, they said all sorts of things. Yes, they've caused you so much harm. But have I healed? Is there a possibility that we can heal this relationship? Is there a possibility that my child can still come back home and, and still be loved even though he or she has caused us so much pain? Is there still a room for you in my house? Is there still a room for you around the table? Is there still a room for you in my life? And that is, is, is deep for me. It's, it's powerful. If God is able to heal the very same person who has caused so much pain to him, am I not also expected to do the same? To say, I don't want to die and leave our family in this mess. We're not talking to each other. We no longer visit each other. We hate each other. We take each other to courts. That's not life. I don't want to meet the creator with this tension, with this heaviness in my heart. Now we say something that I also find absolutely true. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us. It's a process. Healing is a process. Often I talk about forgiving. But also you need to pray for healing. Lord, heal my wounds. Heal the pain. I still think of him or her and I'm angry. I'm agitated. I have not yet healed. But I refuse to leave it hanging. I refuse to give it time and say, in time I will deal with it. No, I intentionally want to heal. And I intentionally want to pray over this because I don't want the burden. I acknowledge that it will take time. But actively, I want to liberate myself. Then, then the author says something which also I find interesting. What am I to do with you? What shall I do with you? The tone is, is, is frustration. And sometimes we are frustrated by those whom we love the most. And possibly I have forgiven you a million times. I've given you chance after chance after chance and you blew it. What am I to do with you? How, how, can, I, how can I help you? And how can I make you a better person? And some people struggle with that. That genuinely they want us to be a family. Genuinely, they want us to build relationships with siblings. But every time I bring you closer, every time I call you home, every time I open my house to you, you disappoint me. And every time it, it seems as if you come up with a new trick. And I'm afraid that I cannot trust you. I'm afraid that I cannot open my home to you. I'm afraid that I can expose my children, to this kind of behavior. And sometimes, 
That's the pain. That's the struggle. That's the dilemma of our lives. I love you, and yet I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid of allowing you back because of the pain. And if you're going through that, I pray that the Lord give you a solution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.